Hi everyone. Um, so I know that when you watched the video for lesson 910, um, I told you that was the last lesson in chapter 9, and it was. I wasn't lying to you. But I, I want to just make sure that you remember back to the beginning of chapter 9 when we did exponential functions. And there were some problems that we did back in 91 and 92 where we weren't technically able to solve them. I mean, we were able to estimate a solution using our calculator, but we weren't able to come to a, a concrete answer as a solution. Um, and of course, that bothers mathematicians. I kept promising you that eventually I was going to teach you how to solve them for real, and I did when we did lesson 910. But I just want to make sure that you kind of connect the dots and that you pull everything together full circle to see how, how what I taught you in lesson 910 relates back to the beginning of the chapter. So if you look at this first example, if you kind of cut it off at the end of this first sentence, this should sound like a problem from like 9-1, okay, lesson 9-1. And if you need to, you can even flip back to those notes and take a look. But you should be able to write yourself an equation for an exponential function based on that first sentence. And I'm going to have you pause the video right now and see if you can do that. And like I said, if you need to flip back and look at your notes, please do. So it should look something like this. If 2010 is the year we're starting, we're going to call this our initial value. That's like our A value. So 16,538. And then that 1.7%, that's going to deal with our growth factor. But do keep in mind that you have to add to 100%, okay, um, in order to grow. And if you need to use a calculator for this, please do. I know that you all are capable of doing 100 plus 1.7, but sometimes when we try to hold that number in our brain, that decimal gets kind of messed up, and I get like 1.17 and things like that. So if you actually add it together and look at it, then you can say, all right, I need to move that decimal point two places to the left. Okay, so this is going to be 1.017. Okay, that's my growth factor. And then we're going to go to the power of x because this is happening every single year. And so x represents our years. Now, normally we would write this as like a y equals and it would be a function and we could graph it and all that stuff. But this question says, when will the population reach 20,000 people? Okay, so we want to know when will this equal 20,000? And if you think back to lesson 9, 1, and 9, 2, we did ask you these questions, and the best we could do at that time is to put this thing into our calculator and look in our table and try to get as close to 20,000 as we could. But now we have a way that we can actually solve it. I know you're just so excited about that, but... So thinking back to what we did yesterday with 910, um, first thing I want to do is isolate this exponential piece, which is the 1.017 to the power of x. So I'm going to start by dividing away that 16,538. And this is going to give me a messy decimal because real life numbers are always messy. So I'm going to do 20,000 divided by 16,538, whoops, not with a negative sign, and I get this 1.209 number, which I'm going to write down in its rounded form for right now, but when I actually go to do some math with it in a second, I'm going to try hard to keep the whole decimal intact as best I can. So this piece is gone, I'm left with just this, and I have, what was that number again, 1.209. This is like what we were solving in lesson 910, right? The numbers are a little messier, but it's exactly what we were doing before. We have an x up in the exponent, so I'm going to come along and I'm going to take a common log on each side. And the reason I like doing that is that allows me to take this x out of the exponent and drag it down in front as a multiplier, okay? So now I can rewrite this thing as x times log of 1.017 equals log of 1.209, okay? And again, the reason I like that is because now this has become a multiplication problem that I can solve with just division. So I'm going to divide by that log of 1.017. Okay. This is going in my calculator, and when I do that in my calculator, because I want to try to keep that whole decimal in there, 
I'm going to do log of the answer. I'm going to use this answer button down here. Divided by log of 1.017. And I end up with this 11.27, so I guess it round to 11.28. And remember that X really represents our number of years. So to answer our question, we would want to go this many years forward from 2010. Okay, so it would be sometime during the year 2021 that we would expect Jenison's population to reach, what was it, 20,000. Okay, so again, this is just taking what we learned in 910 and applying it back to what we did at the beginning of this chapter. So next up is everybody's favorite. Here's some half-life for you. So a radioactive element has a half-life of 12 days. How many days will it be before only 10% of the original mass remains? Okay, so two difficult things about this one. First of all, we have to remember how half-life works. And secondly, we have to deal with percentages. So let me show you the easiest way to do this, but then I wanna show you some other ways you could approach this also um, and show you why it doesn't matter how you approach it. So if I'm starting this one the same way I did back here, my initial value, if I'm dealing in the land of percentages, would be 100%, okay? And 100% as just a regular whole number would be the number one, okay? So I'm gonna set this up like one, and then it's half-life, so I'm doing this as 0.5. And then remember, up in the exponent, we're gonna take the number of days, which is x, and divide by 12 because we want to know how many groups of 12, how many times do we have to cut this thing in half. And so for every 12 days, we have to cut it in half. So this is what that setup would look like. So I want to go from 100% down to only 10%. So if this is representing 100%, 10% would be 0 0.1, well, 0 0.10 if you really want to, but it doesn't matter, 0.1. Okay, so here's 100%, here's 10%. This is going to be the easiest way to go because if you think back here, the first thing we did was divide. Here, if we're working with a one, we don't have to divide, right? Because dividing by one doesn't really do anything, so we can just kind of jump into that next step. But let me show you what some people like to do with these ones. If they get bothered by that 10% thing and 100% thing and all of that, you can just make up numbers. So let's say you start with 90 grams of this element. And the rest of this would look the same. So 0.5 to the power of x over 12. And then you want to think about when will I have 10% remaining? Well, what's 10% of 90? It would be 9. Okay. So you could say I'm going to go from 90 to 9. Or you could say, I'm going to start with 100 grams because it's 100% and go 0.5 to the power of x over 12. And then over here, you would say, what's 10% of 100? Well, it would be 10. You could start with, I don't know, make it up, 5,000 grams, okay, 0.5, power of x over 12. And if you took that down by 10%, you would be left with 500. You could do any of these setups and it would all still work. Here's why. Because your very first step is gonna to be to divide by that number. So if I divide both sides by 90, okay, nine divided by 90, guess what it's gonna be? 0.1, same thing I have here, right? If I do 10 divided by 100, it's going to be 0.1. 500 divided by 5,000 is going to give me 0.1. So if it makes you feel better to work with concrete numbers rather than percentages, go ahead and do it. And I'm saying this more for, like you're gonna run into problems eventually where it's gonna say, how long will it take for the amount to double, okay? You can put anything you want here and here as long as this number is double what this one was, okay? Um, but your very first step is gonna to be to divide and it's always gonna end up dividing out to equal two. So that's just my soapbox rant about that, is use whatever numbers you want, as long as this is 10, per, or sorry, this is 10% of this. And this is gonna be the easiest way to go, because if you start with a one, dividing isn't gonna do anything. 
Okay, rant complete. So like I said, we don't really care about that one, right? Because when we divide by one, it doesn't do anything. So I can jump right into taking the log on this side. I'm kind of just pretending that one doesn't exist. And the log on this side. And then I'm taking this whole exponent down in front. So I would have x over 12, and I'm putting that in parentheses because it's kind of a complex one, times log of 0.5 equals log of 0.1. I'm going to divide both sides by log of 0.5. So I'm doing log of 0.1 divided by log of 0.5. And I get this 3.32. And remember, that's left with this, right? x over 12 is going to equal that. So now I have x over 12 equals 3.32. And my next logical step here would be to divide, or sorry, multiply by 12 on each side. So in my calculator, take that, multiply by 12, and you're going to end up with 39.86. Um, and since we're talking numbers of days, it probably wouldn't have hurt to just call that 40. But this is 39.86 days. Okay. Um, just to point out here, so this 3.32 number, what that was really telling you is how many times we cut in half. By multiplying by 12, that converted it to a number of days. But if you had 40 days and you divided it by 12, um, this would be saying you'd be cutting in half this many times. The difference there is really just the fact that we rounded this up to 40. Okay, So that's how many times you would take your... Um, initial amount and cut in half for it to get down to 10%. Okay, so this third question is a bit more of a throwback. This is going back to chapter 7 with um, compound interest. And this is why I've always made the argument that compound interest really belongs in this chapter. So let's see if up through here you can set this thing up into, as an equation. Remember this is A or sorry, P, sorry, this is P, 1 plus R over N, so 0 0.065 over 4, because it's quarterly, and then to the power of N again, so that's 4 times, and because we don't know the time, this is our T. Okay, does that ring a bell? Just in case it doesn't, here's the formula I was using. A equals P, 1 plus R over N to the power of N T. Um, hopefully this 1 plus thing makes more sense to you now, right? That 1 plus is the same thing as up in number 1 when we added the 1 in front of the 1.7%. That's to make it grow. Just in this case with the compound interest, we have to take that growth rate and... Um, divide it up because it's being compounded multiple times per year. And then also this is the same as having an x up in the exponent, okay? So we're going to try to solve this thing. This one looks a little more complicated. Um, we're trying to get to $8,000. And again, up until now, the best we could do with that is just kind of estimate, okay? We could look in our calculator and see, okay, when t is one year, when t is two years, and so on. But we can do a better job of that. Here's what we're going to have to do with this one is before we start, we need to take this and get it to just be a single decimal so that it looks more like problem number one. That's not that bad. We can do this part in a calculator. So I'm just going to do 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by 4, okay, to get that as a single value. All right, I'm just putting that thing together. So I'm going to rewrite this thing as 5,000. Um, and you know what? Actually, at the same time that I write that value down, I'm also going to go ahead and divide by the 5,000. Just like in all the others, first step would be to divide out that starting value. So when I write this, I'm going to write this thing that's boxed here in orange as that number I got from my calculator, and I'm not going to lose any of those decimal places. Point, so 0 0.01625 to the power of 4t 
equals, and then 8,000 divided by 5,000 is going to give me 1.6. Oh, shouldn't have done that in pink. I wrecked my whole system. But next step would be to take log on each side. Move 4t down in front. So we end up with 4t times log 625 equals log of 1.6. I'm going to divide by this log. Okay, I'm trying to save some time here by not writing that all out, but so I'm going to go log of 1.6 divided by log of, and again, I should be able to just use, oh no, because I did this in my calculator. So I'm going to have to type it in again. 1625, not the end of the world. Okay, we get 29.15, uh, one point, sorry, 158 would be how I would say that. So now, this is gone, and we end up with 4t equals 29.158. And then I'm going to get rid of that 4 by dividing by 4. And we end up with t equals 7 point, and we'll go 7.3 years. So if you did this initial calculation with 7.3 years in here for t, let's see how close we'd get. So 5,000, 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by, well, going too fast, divided by 4, to the power of 4 times 7.3. And we end up with 8,005. Again, the, the difference there is just the fact that we rounded this decimal. If I had used the ANS thing to pull this decimal straight down, I would have gotten exactly $8,000. So... Using logarithms kind of opens up this whole other world of being able to solve equations. And you may not feel super excited about that now, but I will tell you that uh, that's exciting to mathematicians. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching. And um, yeah, good luck with this material. And we'll talk soon.